anatomy of an emergency medical call really starts when somebody picks up the phone and they dial 911. And that gets answered by an emergency dispatcher up in Shelburne Falls. And they're employed by the state police. And they ask what's the nature of the emergency and where the emergency is. Once they learn that there's a medical emergency and it's in one of the towns that we cover, they actually dispatch us via radio. And we are alerted to where the call is and what the nature of the call. Our crew gets up from their office, they walk out to the ambulance, they start the ambulance up and they drive to the call. And once they arrive on scene, well I should say on their way to the call, they start brainstorming about what type of equipment they're going to need, what they might encounter based on the information the dispatcher relayed to them, and formulating a plan about any extra equipment, what they need to carry into the house, or extra uh, personnel or resources. Our ambulance is staffed with one paramedic, generally, and one provider of a different certification level, which does make a paramedic ambulance. We receive the tone just as in uh, the times before South County EMS, but the difference is that that staffed crew can move to the ambulance and uh, take it directly to that particular scene, um, which we have an out of shoot time, which means the time that we receive the call to the time the truck is on the road moving towards the call is about one to two minutes. Once, they, once the EMS crew gets into the house, they interview the patient and any family members or bystanders that are there, and they do a full thorough patient assessment. And the goal for that patient assessment is to find out what is that person complaining of, why do they call 911, um, and what symptoms they have, and then what signs they have. And the difference is a symptom is what a patient complains of, and a sign is what a paramedic or an EMT actually sees. So things like sweating and changes in color. They put all that stuff together, all their education and training and all that time that they've spent in school coalesces at that moment. And they take what they observe and what they hear and they formulate what they believe to be what is wrong with the patient and they can start their interventions. And that might be as simple as a splint or a wrap or something to support a joint or it might be something very complicated like delivering electricity or a medication in somebody's vein or starting that IV. Uh, all the paramedic equipment that we need will be brought to the side of the patient. We can do all the diagnostics, we can do all the uh, IV access at the patient's side, extricate them and then make an informed decision about what hospital to go to from that point. Once that treatment is started, now it comes down to actually what we say extricating the patient from their house or from the car. And that can be as simple as somebody just walking outside as they normally would, or it might be more complicated. We have backboards where somebody lays down and we actually physically carry them out of the house. We also have special chairs that they can sit down on and we can wheel them downstairs and things like that. A lot of our job is actually trying to uh, figure out how we're gonna move a patient from where we find them to our ambulance. Once we get them in the ambulance and they're on the stretcher, they're seat belted in just like everybody else should be seat belted in a moving vehicle and we continue that treatment. So if there's any more treatments we need to give or if we assess them and their condition changes, then we might change what treatments we give. We continue to do that all the way to the hospital. As we're going to the hospital, we call the hospital on the radio and we tell them what type of patient we have, what we've done for them and how they've changed and then the hospital gets ready for our arrival. Once we get to the hospital with the patient, we wheel them in and we actually give report to either the nurse or the doctor. So the same way that a nurse gives report to a doctor and a doctor gives report to another doctor, we give report as well. So we tell them the name of the patient, we introduce them, we tell them what's going on with them, the, the uh, interventions, the medications and things that we've given that patient, and then we hand off that patient care. And then once everything's done, all of our staff, all of our EMTs and paramedics are required to write a patient care report. And that's a medical record of everything that we've done and we've learned about them. And that gets entered into their actual uh, medical record as part of that, that whole package.